Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to speak about the subject of, is censorship necessary? Well, we do live in a society where we are bombarded with news, we have social media, we have YouTube, we have so many different outlets where we get our news from and we get our information on the world from. But if you really think about it, does the media need to censor all the things? Well, for the regular person, they will often get their information from the news, from the local news, whatever is on the local channels. For people that are a little more, bit more interested in the news, well, they're going to go to other outlets and maybe look more at CNN or other news channels depending on the country that you're in. But if you're a really avid person who really wants to get the news, well, you can get a lot of info from the internet and then you can go see international news. You can go see news from different countries because, for example, in America, they will focus a lot on whatever is local. They will focus on what is happening locally and they will focus on that and they will not give you really any information on anything else, which is kind of strange because by just getting your local information, well, you're not really understanding that there's, well, bad things happening in different parts of the world, that there's many different obstacles that people are trying to get over in order to live and by just getting the news that you are given locally, well, you're kind of putting a blind eye on whatever is happening in the rest of the world. But does everybody need to know? The thing is that it's censored in one place, but usually if you look further with, again, the internet and social media and all that stuff, it's much more difficult to censor stuff because people, anybody really that has a phone is literally posting stuff. So you're able to get information faster than it, than it even happens to you. For example, me being uh, simply just in Los Angeles, well, you got to think that we get earthquakes. We are in earthquake country. And every time that something like that happens, well, guess what? I get my mom texting me or calling me from Europe saying, oh my God, I heard on the news that there was an earthquake. Are you okay? And up to now, we never know because there could always be a very big one. I always say I barely felt it, which is true, or I didn't even feel it at all. But the news will make a big hullabaloo of this. And they're going to make big scenes. They're going to talk a lot about whatever is happening in the most of the civilized places or the most Western places because I think the whole world is civilized in itself. It's just that the people with power, the people with money mostly live in these Western countries and they tend to talk about these news. But then they forget about other places that are third world countries where they might not have so much. They have a lot of wealth within their um, land, but they don't have the same bankability with companies and with people living in it, celebrity-wise or uh, power-wise and stuff like that. So the thing is, is that it's very strange because, well, you're getting a censorship because in some ways, well, you're going to get the information from one side of the world, but not from the other. And really, in the end, I think, yes, there's censorship. But at the same time, if you're seeking a certain type of information, you are able to get it nowadays. It's going to get changed by the media, unfortunately, because the people at stake, the people who own these companies, are usually part of these things because money creates trouble money creates wars and they will try to 
often defend the police and hide police brutality, brutality and stuff like that. But it's tough. And the thing is, is at the same time, if you're a policeman, you're, you're there to protect. But at the same time, you're in situations that can be bad. And there's good people and bad people. But usually, if you're in a, in a position where you can protect people, but you're doing the reverse, well, then the people get mad at that, which is normal. And I totally agree on that. But luckily, we do have outlets such as the internet where we are less censored. Do we have a completely uncensored internet? No, not at all. Because, again, the search engines are different between one country and the other. You will see different things. And you will not see others. And then you might be able to still access a website that will give you the information, but it will not be on the first page. It will be on the third page or fourth page of your search. And most people will not go that far. Now, is it a necessity? I do think that some things need to be censored, but most things don't. Actually, unfortunately, I feel that even the things that are not censored, most people don't really look further than what they need to know. They will not, not look at problems of other countries. They would not, will not look at and under, try to understand what's happening somewhere else. And they will just get mostly stuck with what is close to them. And the closer you are to a political problem or uh, to a religious problem or to just a war, which often is related to politics and religion, and that's why we don't talk about it, um, that's why the countries that are adjacent to these problems usually know all the stuff that's happening. And then they're the ones that have to face consequences. And they're the ones that try to migrate. They're the ones that come from countries where they're migrating, the migrants and stuff like that. But at the same time, because we are ignorant of what is happening there, first of all, they're not getting the right help. Second of all, we don't treat them in a humane enough way because if you are in a situation where you can't get food, life and death, you're not going to care what citizenship you have. You're not going to care that a country is going to accept you or not. All you got to know, all you're going to want to know is that you want to survive. So you're going to flee. You're going to do what is needed in order for you to be able to live another day or another year or whatever and be able also to feed your family and all these things. So you cannot blame them. You cannot say go back to your home because they don't really have a home to go back to. They're at war. And you know how they talk about PTSD? Well, sometimes it takes just one bullet to have PTSD or one life and death situation to be literally completely traumatized for life. And you, as a person who is in a sheltered country, will maybe not realize that. And it's not because I'm saying it that you will. It, it's more having, if you have to live those experiences or know people who have lived these experiences and see how they're dealing with it to truly understand these things. But a lot of people just like to close their eyes and believe that we're in Disneyland, believe in the truth. Usually people who live in good countries, uh, well, they... They will live in good countries and they will accept that. They will accept these facts and they will basically live as if they're in La La Land. Well, not Los Angeles, but Disneyland, you know. So that's it. That's all I have to say on the subject. Have a good day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.